Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry to be a few minutes late. Had some uh, bad news this morning. So um, I'm here. This is Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. And um, we're going to have our cricket chat this morning. We're going to talk about shaped cards. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make shape cards. Now, I know I did this before, but I want to um, do it again because I don't, I don't think it was the subject of the conversation. And um, I think there are a lot of opportunities to make your own shaped cards. And I thought, well, heck, why don't we um, go ahead and do that? Hello. Good morning. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Amy. Yeah, well, you know... Amy, what happened was uh, he's uh, not a relative, but only through marriage. Um, but my nephew, through marriage, uh, passed away in his sleep. He was only 49. That's crazy. Just makes you think about everything, you know. Um, hi. <coughs> hi, Terry. Hi, Susan. Good morning, Diane. <coughs> I'm a little... Um, I got a frog in my throat this morning. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to make uh, shaped cards this morning. But before I get started, I wanted to remind you that tomorrow, um, hello, <laughs> Wendy. Good morning. Hi, Dorothy. <clears throat> so tomorrow we are, I cannot come to the, uh, to do, the cricket chat, at least not at nine o'clock because I have to go and take some care of some things in Boston and it's, uh, I have an appointment at nine o'clock. Then hopefully, um, I will, <clears throat> I will be coming back, but I'm not terribly sure about that because my car, um, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's at the end of the lease. So I have to go and talk to the, um, talk to the, lease or dealership or whatever and see what I'm going to do. That kind of snuck up on me. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> pardon me, but, um, I had a, tr a little trouble coming up with a, uh, topic today just simply because, um, I wanted to do a box. I wanted to do this box, which I guess I'm going to have to wait until next week because, um, and it uses corrugated cardboard and it's a really great box. And in fact, I put my little, my new little tools in there, that little tool thing, um, in there. And, uh, but I couldn't find this paper. Uh, good morning, Penny. Hi, Emmy. Yeah. It's really sad. It's just kind of sinking in right now, but yeah, he had a, had a son. Um, he lives in my town too, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. I don't know what to make of it. But yeah, so I'm going to be getting a new car, I guess. I don't drive a whole lot. I sometimes think maybe I shouldn't even have a car because um, I got it, let's see, three years ago, right? Um, and what are you supposed to do? No more than 15,000 miles a year? Mine has less than 15,000 miles on it. Um, <laughs> uh, and And that's three years. So I did only one mile, one year's worth of mileage on this car. So it's in a good condition. Um, but you never know, you could try something new anyway. Yeah. So I wanted to do this box and I couldn't find this paper. And I, I was like digging all over, couldn't find it. It's a really cute box and it's great for storing things in and it's summertime because it has this mermaid on it, but I couldn't find this paper. So there's that. Uh, then I ch decided to change to this box, which is a um, cactus. It has a little cactus on the top. But um, I was really disappointed at the bottom here uh, of this box. So I have to go back because it had the weirdest flap. So I have to go back and redesign that. So instead, I opted for this uh, shaped card that I developed a while ago that is just so darling. And um, so I want to 
show you how to do this and also how to put together shaped cards. And if you remember, we talked about it briefly in one of the topics, one of the Cricut Chats about two weeks ago. And um, so I wanted to show you how to do this and where to find the images and everything because it's really fun. And I see a lot of designers making these shaped cards. And in fact, we did this shaped card, remember? So um, this is very similar. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Wendy. Yeah. So, so I'll wait. I'm sure I'll find my, my mermaid paper, but <laughs> next week. And then, so for Saturday night, here's what I was thinking. I would pick a project, doesn't have to be anything particularly special, but I wanted to um, ask you if you would like to have sort of a question and answer, like ask me anything about cricket. Um, you splashed, I splashed you out. You splashed me out of the water. <laughs> Um, so I was thinking Saturday night, uh, you know, it seems like people have these really great questions and they don't know where to ask and they may not be on a particular topic. So I was thinking maybe you could put your thinking caps on uh, in the next day or two. Unicorn ornaments. Yes, unicorn. Yep. So, unicorn. Well, I could do... I could do um, unicorn as a theme, but I thought, uh, yeah, which is fine. I could show you a couple of really cute unicorn uh, projects. But um, I thought that it, I was just really like jazz last Saturday night when you guys asked all those great questions and a couple of them were like real stumpers. Um, oh, you shared. Thank you. I didn't know what that meant. Yeah, so I figured think about maybe jot down your questions and, you know, it doesn't have to be on any particular topic. It could be on, you know, using fonts or it could be used, you know, on some of the tools. It could be on uh, what a pattern is or how to upload an SVG file or anything you want, how to do print and cut. The only thing is right now, um, and I'm working with Cricut on this, but my print and cut is not working. I can show you all of the uh, steps, but I can't actually, I can print all the way up to the print part, but I can't cut on my machine. But I, I'm happy to talk about print and cut and how to flatten images and things like that. So I could prepare a a little project and then we could just kind of do question and answer. I thought that would be good. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, when we started the giveaways for August, um, I wasn't able to tell you about that new weeding kit, that weeding, the, the True Patrol knife that comes with the weeding tools. And so for those that... Um, for those that won already this month, um, I could substitute the weeding uh, kit as long as it stays in stock. So if um, you won already, I wanted to ask if that was okay to substitute that new product. So you'd be one of the first people that got that new product, the weeding kit. So if you've already won, and I think there's seven of you so far, um, I could substitute the knife with this instead and um, wanted to check on you and I'll, I'll email you about it too. And then of course we'll have prizes on Saturday night, which I think we'll do this, the, the weeding kit. So I'm just asking those that already won um, if, and I will talk to them through email, but if they wouldn't mind substituting the plain true control knife for the um, weeding knife, the weeding kit. So, um, yay. So, so anyway, that's sort of it. It's a little kind of, di you know, discombobulated. So tomorrow, remember no cricket chat, but Saturday night, it sounds like people want to do, um, <clears throat> want to do that Q and A and I'll prepare and maybe I'll even find this. Oh no, you said unicorns. Okay. never mind. I'll do unicorns. Unicorns are good. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, so <clears throat> thank you, Michelle. I have a little frog in my throat um, today. So anyway, um, let's talk about these, what I call them shaped 
cards. Um, and in some cases, we've already done some of these shaped cards, but basically what they are is we're using what's called the offset feature. That's what this is below the the bottom bottom most layer is called the offset layer and it basically is just kind of like a shadow around the image and a lot of the images um, from the older cartridges are or from the older image sets are like this it, with the, with a shadow layer and I'm going to show you how to turn that into actually a card. Thank you for sharing everyone. Turn it into a card and it's just really adorable. Yeah, I love the mermaid box. I just have to find my mermaid. It reminds me of Cher in that movie. I guess it was called Mermaid. I got to get the mermaid out of here. I can't find my mermaid um, paper. Ugh, drive me crazy. Um, okay, so let's talk about shaped cards. So this is one that um, I love to do. It's a great birthday card. And I want to show you some of the others that we um, or I have done and that we can do together. So let me, um, let's start new. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, a lot of the older images that were, you know, part of when they had the cartridges um, had these types of images that have what's called a um, shadow layer or an offset layer. And so you're not going to find this on newer images so much. But if you went to images and you did go to image sets, which is where I always like to go. Um, I know of at least three um, cartridges that you could choose from a lot of images. Um, and so one of them is called uh, Charmed, Simply Charmed, um, Simply Charmed. And then there's, uh, let's see, what's the other one? Sim Charm. Charmed. No, I don't think necessarily charmed. It's simply charmed. And then there's create. Oh, that's right. It's simply charmed. And then here's what this brings up. Um, a lot of really cutesy, what I call anthropomorphic, which means that they are giving human characteristics to, um, to inanimate objects like this strawberry and this cupcake which is adorable um, and then also some cutesy animals as well so this one's called simply charmed and let's go back to um, using the word create uh, because create a critter one and two has some pretty cute images there um, so uh, let's see, there's this adorable dog and I mean, just some really cute things like I love this. I guess it's a squirrel or maybe it's a woodchuck, but it's just really cute. Um, this hedgehog's cute and keeping with our uh, summer theme, there's the crab and uh, just a lot of really adorable images this cute owl and when you're thinking about these cards um you do have to think in terms of because these are not cards right now but you have to think in terms of how are they going to um stay open you know if you give it to somebody oh koala i didn't see the koala let me see where's the koala somebody's where are they hmm oh is this no, oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, let's pull him in. And let's pull in uh, the hedgehog, too. So um, this is really a fun technique. And you can do all kinds of modifications. For instance, you can put in, in uh, a sentiment on the inside here, too. Um, and all you have to do here, I want to, let's make this cupcake a little bit bigger so it's easy to see. And there's our hedgehog and let's make our whatever this is <laughs> this is a chick bunk i don't know and the koala the other thing about the koala is i'm not sure if it would stand up on those legs but anyway um so here here uh here's what you have to look for over here on the left 
on the right hand side where your layers are is um, you'll notice that there's all these layers so for this cupcake it has it has one two three four five six layers that are showing and that let's ungroup it so you can see what those are so here this is like hot pink and red there's a black layer there is this frosting layer and then the two layers for the cupcake but one of the things you don't see is that there is a another layer that automatically gets shaded out um which is it's i don't know why it does that but it just it's that's the offset layer so let me show you on the other images so here's our offset layer so on our um hedgehog there's the offset layer. I like the offset layer. I think they're really cute and it really makes the image pop. Um, and so I, I kind of like that. And I normally would just go over and cut it if I was cutting it out for a card or for whatever the case may be. But in this case, we're going to use the offset layer um, to make the base of our card. So um, let me show you what we do here. So here are all, so when you get the image that you like, let me just move these guys over, I'll group them. Um, you're going to take that offset layer, ungroup your image, and you're going to duplicate it up here. This is where you duplicate, okay? And you're going to put your duplication sort of right beside that original one, but Here's what you need to do, because we're creating a cart. It opens like this, right? So the front has to match the back. So in this case, we have to flip the image like this so that the front matches the back. So we have to flip one part of it. We'll choose this left part. And we go up here. And this is a very little known feature, but it's really fun. It's called flip. And you can choose either flipping it horizontally or flipping it vertically. So vertically is this way. Horizontally is this way, I believe. Let's try that. Flip horizontally. Yep, there you go. So now they are looking like opposites, right? Um, and then what you do is you have to, let's get real close so I can show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so here is my uh, opposite and there is my other one. Now I'm putting them close enough that they're touching, but only just by like a hair. Like maybe it's a quarter of an inch, right? Just enough that that offset layer. Then once they're touching, I grab them both like that, and I come down here to weld. Now I have the base of my card, and then I can build, let's get this up, arrange forward, okay. So then I can build it, so this becomes the back, and this becomes the front, or uh, depending on how you fold it, this could be the back of the front, if you know what I mean. So then you have a card and you build the card onto that base. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Helen. Um, so you build, you build the card on that base and um, the, the part where it's welded becomes the part that is the fold in the card. Super easy, right? So it's just a cut. Let's just do a couple more so that we can, um, so that we can see what we're doing here. Let's do that koala. All right. So look over onto the layers and wait. Does the koala have? He doesn't seem to have one. Interesting. Oh no, I. Duh. Okay, so I actually showed it it was came in unshown so so here's the koala it has a gray layer and then a light gray layer a brown layer and then here's the black layer that's the offset layer okay so we're going to take that and duplicate it up here move it beside um beside the original you can move these things out of the way so move it beside the original, and I think, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking maybe we want it to fold at the top. So if we want it to fold at the top, we would flip it, but do a vertical flip. 
and then connect it at the head. I think think that would be best. What do you guys think? I think that would be best because then it would open instead of on the side, it would open on the top. Yep, I can show you how to do the sentiment for sure. So, okay, I think I'm going to do the, the uh, vertical flip. So I'm going to select these two images, see they're touching, and then I'm going to choose weld down at the bottom. Now, if I wanted to, I could change the color to something that would be able to see the sentiment. Um, and... I just want to check and see. That's about that's a good size card. It's it's going to end up being about six inches wide by five inches tall because see the height is ten, so half of ten is five. So a six by five card that could be that. But if you decide you want to change it, um, you can go ahead and put all your layers back. And by the way, you can just make this go. Send it to the back. And here is our card. Now, if you want to change the size of the card, you would select them all. You can either group it or not, but you can change the size of the card by selecting them all and then just pulling here to whatever size you want to do. Um, and frankly, I think 10 was good, was a good size for this card. Okay, so there's that. Now, how do you put a sentiment? on there. So first we got to take our layers away. All right. Let me move this over so we can let's go bigger so you can see this. Okay, so here is the base of our card. Yes, align them first up so that they are sort of duplicate. So let me just show you that again uh Kathy because I was kind of stumbling over there. So here's our chipmunk we're going to do the sentiment on the koala in a minute. But here's our chipmunk. Ungroup. If you haven't already done it, move, uh, get the offset layer showing. Duplicate it up here. All right. And so put them side by side or however way you want to do them doesn't matter at this point. At this point, you have to decide, okay, do I want it to open on the side or do I want it to open on the top? And in this case, I think even though the ears are showing, I think the top would be a good place to, um, to do it. So let's flip, flips right here. Let's flip it vertically. Okay, you see that? Now I'm lining them up sort of they're, they're definitely lined up and they're kind of touching just ever so little, ever so little, right? There you go. And then take them both, do, you know, select them both and go down here to weld. And there is, and we can change it to white. And there is our card. So then what we do, let's move this to the back so you can see. We would build our, um, cut out all of these pieces and build our little chipmunk. I'm starting to think this is a chipmunk. I would have said squirrel, but it looks like a chipmunk. So we'd build the chipmunk on here. Now, here's the thing that could mess you up. So pay attention to this part. So in this case right? Um, you have to think in terms of which part of the card is going to be the inside, okay? And in this case, um, if you fold, if you did it this way and then folded it, this would be the front of the card, right? And this would be the back and this would be the inside. But think in terms of what, how you put your paper, because sometimes paper has different um, feel on the top than it does on the bottom, particularly Cricut um, paper, not this kind of paper that we get from Michaels, because that's really, it's the same texture either way. But um, let me just see if I have a piece of the Cricut stuff. All right, so here's Cricut. You see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a texture on this side than on this side. So 
I generally find that if you write on the back side, the non-textured side, it would work better. So if I were going to do a sentiment on this card, I would probably put my paper facing with the textured side down. Okay, same holds true for something that's patterned. Um, if you want to put the sentiment on the white part, so if it's a single pattern on the front, but it's white on the back, you're going to have to put the pattern side down when you do the sentiment. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, hi, <laughs> Laurie Joe. So, yeah, so we're doing these adorable shaped cards. Let me show you now how to do a uh, sentiment on the inside. So what should we say? Um, let's do this koala bear one. So here's our koala bear and this is going to be the inside. And let me just move the woodchuck over. Um, okay, so we're going to put a sentiment inside. And we determined that this was a good size for the card. We might change our minds, but whatever. <laughs> Hi, David. Oh, you'll have to catch the replay. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of already into it. Hey, David, we're not going to be around tomorrow, but we are going to do Saturday night date night. I hope you can join us. So, okay, so sentiment. Um, hey, hi, Sherry. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm, I am I am happy and I'm honored to be able to teach you all. So, okay, sentiment. So we're going to go over here to a text. And I don't know, like, maybe we'd say uh, just hugs. Because, of, you know, koala bear and hugs, like give you a bear hug or something. Maybe you could do that. And so I opened a text box by typing the T and then this, this, uh, blue box comes up and this is where I type whatever I want. Happy birthday, whatever you want to put. Okay. Now know that this is a cut file and we want to do it with, as a draw, right? We want to use our pens because we have all those luscious pens and we want to use them. So we need to change this to a writing font. All right, and we do that up here on this font, uh, what do you call it? Like ruler or tab, font section, all right? So I just type it. It always comes up Cricut Sans. You don't have to use that Cricut Sans, but when I do a text, I always just start with whatever they give me, and then I start making changes. So in this case, if I want to make this a writing font, I would just hit style and, and use this pull-down box and choose writing. Um, and if I wanted to make a change to the font, I would choose font and then I would look and I would look for something that says as a writing font. So you'll see on the left hand side, first of all, you'll see the name of the font and A if it's part of Cricut Access and then what kind of font it is. So it has single layer cutting and writing, this one here called April or Agent Q. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't see with my, my glasses um, that far away. So I'm looking for a font that's, that's part of Cricut Access. So it needs to have an A. And I'm looking for a font that has a writing style. Okay, so here I go. I'm just looking at, and there's over 400. So there's a very good chance that you're going to get overwhelmed at a certain point, or you'll find ones that you really like. And so you'll stick to those, and that is fine. So um, let's see. One of the ones that I really like is called Four Seasons Home Decor. I don't know. I just like it. So by choosing that and having it on writing, there it comes out as there's my writing font. Um, and that's up to you. You know, you can do whatever you want. So if you don't want to do four seasons, you could choose a different one like um, this algebra one. Hugs. 
just says hugs. And you could actually make it look popping out of on your card by using a thick marker, like a 1.0 marker, rather than something that's like 0 0.4, a, a marker or a gel pen. And that will look better on your on your card because it's just sort of like hugs, I'm sending you hugs or something. Um, and then once you have that, you have to position it where you want it on the card. So somewhere in his head area. And then you select the whole thing and you're going to do attach, which is down here. So now our hugs is part of the card. Let me show you that again, okay? So let's use this chipmunk and we're gonna go, sorry chipmunk, you're all in pieces. Okay, we're gonna go over here to text. What do we want the chipmunk to say? How about happy fall or something? Because it's getting near fall. Happy fall. Now, one thing you should notice is if you've been doing a text font, it keeps it on that font that you were working with. So in this case, see, it's the same font that we used on hugs. But you can still change it, of course. You can change it and choose something else that you like, such as, let's find another one. Um, this one's all uppercase, so it doesn't matter if you have, oh, this one's cute. Let's see if it has a writing style. Nope, it doesn't have a writing style. Let's choose another one that has a writing style. Now, the other thing that you could do that we did a couple of days ago is we cut it out in vinyl and we applied it to the inside. We could do that too. Um, that, that was fun. Finding writing fonts that don't have an outline. Okay, so Constance is saying, my issue is I like to write my own sentiments in my sympathy cards and I'm having difficulty finding writing fonts that don't have an outline. That don't have an outline. So that are that are double layered, Constance? Um, if they're double layered, you can, uh, sometimes they'll have a single layer option there. Um, so... Let's talk about that offline because I think that's something that we could we could resolve that for you. I thought you were going to say you would like to pick a script font and then, um, oh, this one's cute. Look at this one. It's called Chicken Scratch. <laughs> Happy fall. Now, I, I decided that maybe I want my fall to be an uppercase and I want an exclamation point. I can do that. Now, Chicken Scratch is in, let's see, what is this, the cut file? Oh, we'll switch it to writing. So here's the Chicken Scratch. That's kind of cute. Um, and then we have to fit it to be inside of the card, right? So this, like this. And I don't know, what do you think? There. And then select the whole thing and attach it. Down here is the attach, okay? Um, so, so Constance was saying, let's move this guy over and let's see if I want, I want him a little bit bigger. I don't know. Maybe I'll make him seven inches wide. So here's our hedgehog and the hedgehog's going to be problematic because where are we going to attach it? Right. But, oh, they're so cute. So let's ungroup the hedgehog and we've got her little bow and her face and these brown layers and there's our black layer, okay? So cute. So I think, I don't know, should we attach her by the nose or by the top? I think the nose would be the right place, but it's going to be a little bit sticky. So let's duplicate her offset layer. And let's move the, the offset layer over. Come on, move over. All right, so here's our offset layer. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to flip horizontally. So now the noses are touching almost. We're just going to move them closer so they're touching. <laughs> it's a small thing, but, you know, the other way that we could have done it is... Let's go back and flip it uh, vertically. 
vertically? Yeah. I don't think that that would have worked. It, it's a smaller piece. So, so let's go back and uh, flip it horizontally. I think that would be good. So here's our nose to nose offset layer that we're going to make sure they're touching. Select both of them, use the weld button. So here's our weld button. Let's turn it white. And let's talk about a text for here. So we're gonna do text over here. And um, how about something like sending, oops, I spelled that wrong. Sending hedge hugs because that's adorable. All right, and um, but I want to do it in a different font, so I'm going to go up here and choose. Let's say we choose, um, let's say we choose something probably not appropriate for the hedgehog, but say we chose something that was um, a little bit more of a script, right? Because I want to show you, this is what we went over on Saturday night, but, you know, people do ask about this all the time. So let me find a script font, although this would be adorable, this font. Which one? This one. Oh, this would be so cute. Sending hedgehogs. Now, oh, okay, let me show you this. So sometimes you find a font and it's really, really big. Now you can make it smaller like this, or you can double click on that and put a line space. See that? I made it into two so I can make it smaller like this. Mm -mm. Why do I keep picking it? Like that, you could do that. And then even you could make this centered so that looks really cute all right i i'm gonna put leave that because i think that's adorable do you guys like that <laughs> i like that so um here we go so let me just grab them and do attach so it really is whoever asked me that i can't remember the first name it might have been deborah whoever asked me how do you put a sentiment in a card it's just a matter of you hit the t text button over here it comes up with a box, okay? You type in whatever you want to type in. Uh, happy birthday or whatever, okay? And then you have to consider how do you want that sentiment to be done? Do you want to do it as a cut file? Do you want to do it with a pen? Um, it's up to you. So then you would go up to the fonts and choose whatever font you wanted, and also look here on the left-hand side. You want to choose, if you're an Access member, um, you want to choose something that has an A. And if you want to do it with the pen, you're going to choose something that's writing. Okay? So here, here's another one that's writing. And we need to make sure the style is listed as writing right up here. So font and style. And then it's just a matter of fitting your thing into the card. So here in this case, and if it doesn't fit, then you can make it smaller like this, or you could always double click on that and put a carriage return. I call them carriage return, but you know, a new line. Um, you could center it and you can start playing with it. If it's too much spaces in between the first and the second line, you can go to advanced and you can separate, ungroup by lines and you can move it up like this if it's too close, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can put it here, wherever you're gonna put it. Let me detach this one. Okay, so here's my Happy birthday, arrange to the back. Whoop, ah, undo. Okay, I was trying to move this. So this is way too big for this card, so I would have to make it kind of smaller. Doop, make this one kind of smaller too. All right, whoops. Once you ungroup to lines though, then you, you've, um, this font that I'm working on, it's called Caveman, 
carvings. This one here, the happy birthday one. This one was called car decals. And this one is called chicken scratch. <laughs> and I don't know what this hugs one was. I have to look. Because once you attach it, unfortunately, you lose the, um, you generally will lose. Let me just check. Oh, this one? No, you don't. So once you attach it, you can find out what font it is by looking over here, and it says text algebra. Sometimes you lose what font you you uh, are using, and so it's good to remember uh, what font you use. Um, so anyway, that is that is how you put the text in. I hope that that, that part is helpful. Um, and then just to kind of get back to our... Um, Right. So Diane, um, it's going to be, this is going to be, I'm looking at it as if this is the front, the back of the front, and this is the inside of the back. Okay. Now, if you don't think like that, if your brain thinks differently, here's what you could do. Um, you could like, for instance, with this happy fall one, if this to you and your brain is the front, Okay. You could then, let me just undo the, um, let's unattach or detach this, okay? So in your brain, if you're thinking, okay, this is the front of my card, and this is the back, the outside, front, back, okay? You could also flip this vertically, and this becomes the inside of your card, if that makes any sense. Um, you could do it that way because then when you go, let's get our chippy monk here. See, it, oh, wait. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing myself even. All right, so no, this is, you have to think of it in terms of, I mean, you could certainly do this. Take this and make this your your inside edge. But to be honest, I think you're better off thinking in terms of this is your inside edge, this is your inside front, inside back. Does that make sense, Diane? Um, because you could certainly, and I've seen it done, where you can say this is your inside bottom, but then you have to turn, you have to flip your font over. Let me show you. So you'd have to flip your font, font. Oh, wait, the wrong way. I did it the wrong way, not horizontal. I need my font to be vertical like this. Happy fall. Yeah, like this. You could do it that way if you were thinking that way. But honestly, um, yeah, honestly, I would rather just think of it in terms of this is the inside of my card. Now, if someone's asking about scoring lines, Laurie. Um, to be honest, for this kind of card, you really don't need a whole lot of scoring. Um, but if you want to add scoring, I'll show you how to add scoring, okay? You need to go to shapes over here on the left-hand side. And it's, even though it's not a shape, there's a score line here. So you can grab that. And it comes in at a certain width. You can put it wherever you need that score line. You can change the size of it, make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever you want to do. And you can put it right there if you want the scoring. And then you have to attach it. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to attach it. So now my hedgehog has a score line. But, <coughs> um, but, um, the, I don't think, considering that connection is pretty small, that you really need that score line, and it might weaken the card. So consider that, okay? Um, but that's how you do the score line. Yeah, so, and, um, and Deborah is asking, is there a way to star or favor a font? I love this idea. Right now, there is no way, but I am going to um, 
give that suggestion to Cricut because I love that idea. I find I get kind of lost in fonts all the time and I do have my favorites and it would be great to have a favorites list just like you have favorite materials right? So, um, so I am going to put that suggestion in. We got that on Saturday night, I think too. So let me, um, let me put that in. I don't know how long it would take, but definitely, um, you do have your favorites and there are a whole lot of fonts. So, um, this would be a good way to sort of know what they are. Okay. So that is how to, make these kinds of cards. I did cut out um, a, a birthday cake card that I want to show you how it goes together real quick, okay? Um, and here it is. So here's my birthday cake. We're going a little long, so if anybody has to scoot out, that's fine. But so here's how it goes. So here's my cake that I've attached here. And see, I didn't put a score line there. I also didn't put a, a um, sentiment, but it will go together like this. This is what I like about the old images. So the black becomes the eyes and the mouth, which is great, right? And um, the other thing too that's awesome is that these older images have these little cut lines to indicate where, see those little cuts to indicate where those pieces are going to be going. Um, here we go. Right. And we've got to attach this to the front of a card. Okay. And then we got icing which is great. So let's put a little bit of glue for icing. This one goes together really quickly. And it's great. You can change the colors to match somebody's favorite, whatever you want. Um, I wouldn't change the yellow out, but you could change the icing to be whatever because the yellow ends up being where the flames, see that? And these are actually the is it this way? This way. Okay. Because it has, these even have a little tiny cut on the front to show you where the flame should go. And these do go on the outside of the cake. They don't get um, tucked in. And I know that because there are these, there are these little tiny cuts here. Okay. So here's, this goes here. They're slightly different, these candles, so you gotta be careful that you're putting the one that you need to put on the right way. Okay, and then we can put the flames on, and the flames go ahead of the candle, that's, so that's how you, you don't put the flames behind the candle, you put it in front of, covering up the yellow. This one, okay. Cute, cute card, kind of thing that once you make it, you can make all different colors and different um, ways. You can even add a, a little thing to the front if you wanted to. And then just the cheeks. And there's a little cutout for the cheeks there. So you just put these little cheeky things. They're also um, like little jimmies or, um, oh, I'm calling them jimmies. I shouldn't call them that. Sprinkles. This one, I, these ones I cut out in um, the holographic, but I didn't put them on to my original. So, um, and that is... And that is our shaped card that we made, that we made from the images from those older images, okay? So that is, I'm afraid we ran a little long today. I apologize if anybody's got to get going somewhere. But um, that is how to make shaped images from 
um, shaked cards from images, from the older images. And again, if you want to find those images, there's Create a Critter and Creator Critter 2, and then there's also Simply Charmed. There's also Create a Friend, um, and there. this one here is from Wild Card, um, and they're all, they're hidden all over the place. But if you want to find these particular anthropomorphic animal things, then uh, check out Create a Critter 1 or Create a Critter 2 when you go to Images and you choose Image Sets and type in the word Create. Well, and type in the word Create. So here you go. There's... There's uh, over three, 400 images to play with there. So <clears throat> that's it for today. Just as a reminder, tomorrow, no cricket chat. Saturday night, cricket chat, 7 o'clock. Probably going to do the mermaid box if I can find my mermaid paper. And we're also going to do questions and answers. So get your questions ready and try to stump me with all of your questions for uh, Cricket, okay? So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, again, my name is Rita. This is my channel, Miss Rita to the Rescue, and you've been watching Cricket Chat. And if you are watching this on the replay, thank you. Consider following me if you haven't already and sharing as well. Thanks so much, everyone. You have a great day. See you on Saturday night.